has the Ambazonian diaspora in America been helpful to the Ambazonian people in Ambazonia in the same way that the Israeli diaspora in America has been very helpful to, to, to Israel. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me on Esteem Television. My name is Auguste Nambe. I have a show today which would be a show that is focused on Ambazonians resident in the United States of America. I want this show to be focused on American Ambazonians, either as citizens or residents or people who are in undefined status in the United States, but they do live in America and, uh, and look at it as their primary home, even if it's just for a short time. But, and I'm saying this because all these people, American Ambazonians, especially American Ambazonians, and those who are permanent residents in the United States, um, have a responsibility to Ambazonia more than any other diaspora in the world. It's like the Filipino community, it's like the Korean community, it's like the Japanese community, it's like the Jewish community here. We have come to this land of honey, sugar, and apple pie. We have benefited from it, and we want to be able to unadulterate it without any particular reason for gain. Do what the Jewish and the Korean people have done. I'm like one of the Jews here who is helping to get three billion dollars to Israel every year. And one of the Korean, like one of the Korean Americans here, who is trying to bring business to the Korean community there because he has made it here. The American diaspora for any country, for any other people in the world, has been the most important diaspora. It has been a diaspora that has helped its citizens in the home country liberate themselves, either through advocacy, they have they have more access to important institutions and people in the world to influence the policies towards their home country. Okay? They have access to more money to finance and support those who are fighting or struggling in their home country to better their human condition on earth. So the American diaspora has been a very, very, very important diaspora. I think the question I want to answer today, or I want to ask, really, it's an ask. I know what my answer will be. I'll also let you choose your own answer. But the question I want to ask today is, has the Ambazonian diaspora in America been helpful to the Ambazonian people in Ambazonia? in the same way that the Israeli diaspora in America has been very helpful to, to, to Israel. Or the Eritrean diaspora was very helpful in the liberation of Eritrea from Ethiopia. These are questions we should ask ourselves. I would like to add the South African uh, diaspora. The South African diaspora was very, very important in the liberation of South Africa from apartheid. Has the Ambazonian diaspora in America played its role? That's the question I want to ask and, and I will share what I think, okay? And I hope that you also listen to what I'm saying, think about it, and make a decision, make a decision that gives value to the Ambazonian diaspora in America and helps and that value should be a value that is measured by how it helps the people in Ambazonia. Not help somebody you're supporting or somebody based in the diaspora that you're supporting or some schemes hashed in the diaspora that you're supporting. I think we are getting to a point in our struggle where we have to make personal decisions.
I'm talking personal decisions because we can prove that within the last five years all the diaspora organizations or chaos has not been very helpful to Ambazonia and it is that chaos and lack of helpfulness that is making me to have this conversation this conversation with the American diaspora today. Where do you think we are in our struggle for freedom? From over 100 years of colonial occupation. Where do you think we are? Do you think we are winning? Do you think we are losing? Or do you think we are in a stalemate? La Republic of Cameroon would like to tell the world that, oh, we are winning. And they, and they say that because they want to take away the attention of the world. They, they, they want to take away the attention of the world. Actually, what they do say is that, oh, no, oh, no, there's, you know, no, we've solved the problem. Your yeah, position is clear, it's yes. known. Yes. Uh, that there is no anglophone problem. Yes. You've constantly repeated that. Yes. And I, I will say it, I said it yesterday. I'm saying it today. I will say it tomorrow. There is no anglophone problem in Cameroon. And I've given facts to justify what I say. And again, what they, what they are trying to accomplish by that is tell the world that there is no problem here, so move away and let France, let France, our patron, the patron of what I call bandits, as described by Gojidinka, to continue to, to practice their banditry, uh, armed robbery uh, that, that, that they practice in our land. Ambazonians need to have a chance to run their own life the way God created them to run their own lives. Colonization is a crime. Colonization is a crime. The people of Ambazonia deserve their independence. There's nothing in the world like independence by joining. That's a lie. It's a lie against international law and the people of Ambazonia have a right. They have a right. They have inalienable rights to life, liberty and the pursuit of their happiness. The, uh, the people of Ambazonia haven't had life, they haven't had liberty, liberty and obviously they are, able, they are unable to pursue their happiness in the land that God, by his own will, gave it to them. And that's why you have Ambazonians all over the world. In critical masses, all over the world. And the question to these Ambazonians who are outside their own country is, are you going to be the Joseph for your own people? Are you going to be the Joseph in the Bible who freed his own people? So this is for the American um, uh, American diaspora. If you are in Germany, if you're in Britain, if you're in uh, Belgium, wherever you are, if you're in South Africa, you can listen to me and think about what you need to do in where you are to help your own people because Ambazonia needs to get out of this rut. It is the worst it is the worst type of colonization in the world. Do we have the ability to win? Must win? Can we afford to lose? These are some of the questions we'll be, we'll be asking here. Can we afford to lose? Can we win? I'm smiling because um, the question can we win I think that's a, that has already been answered not only by us but by people in important places who know uh, Thibaut Nash is a very good example and he's becoming uh, stronger and stronger in his belief that we will win the Cameroon armed forces are now stalled 
as the freedom fighters have made driving around Ambazonia deadly. So that, so that question is, 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 is answered. If you think the same as I do, join me in supporting a plan some very patriotic um, uh, American Ambazonians have come up with. Okay, I'm talking to the American Ambazonians that if you agree that we can win, then let us join some a plan that has been put up, that has been worked on for a very long time by some very patriotic American Ambazonians. I will share that plan with you today. You know, some people think that the beginning of winning is carrying a gun. No. The beginning of winning is organization and having a strategy. Then the guns become useful in accomplishing what the strategy is. Otherwise, it will be guns that are just shooting endlessly and, and wasting its resources and, um, and being exploited by the enemy. I just told you that Israel has a very, very powerful organization in the United States. They are very well organized in the United States. And because of their organization, they have determined the policy of America towards Israel. And that has made Israel become the most powerful country in the Middle East. Eritrea, when they were fighting Ethiopia, was a country that was, uh, Ethiopia was a country that was supported by big powers. It, at one time it was supported by the United States, at another time it was supported by the, by, the, by the Russians, by the Soviet Union. But Eritrea, through its American diaspora, I, I, I hear stories that some of them used to live six in a little apartment because they were contributing towards the, the war effort in their country. And today, it, uh, Eritrea is a free country. But I'll tell you the history of the Ambazonian diaspora in America. The Ambazonian diaspora in the United States has never been organized. Some of you may be surprised to hear that. Yes, it's never been organized. Uh, I went to the great city of Washington and when I talked to them, <laughs> the guys thought uh, this guy has motives, you know, they, especially when they saw me hanging around uh, John Frundy, who is the chairman. They said, oh, this guy is trying to be minister or vice president or vice chairman. And let me go back to the 90s, because that's when we started really having a critical mass of Ambazonians in the United States that can actually uh, influence American policy towards Ambazonia and also influence events on the ground. But they were never organized. But the potential was there. And it was there among individuals. And so what used to happen was that I'll give you an example. John Frundi, the head of SDF, sits in Ambazonia, appoint James Bojong in Atlanta, who then goes around the United States and organizes people for the SDF, collects money from Ambazonians in the, uh, uh, in the United States, and that money went down to him in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Then he turns around and sends money to John Frundy. I don't know how much he sent, we in America who contributed that money don't know how much he collected. We don't know how much he sent. Frundi receives that money. We don't know how much Frundi gave the SDF. And we don't know what the SDF did with the money. Because this was money that was, that was collected by entrepreneurs. Frundi, the entrepreneur, contacts his friend. I later heard, that, I later heard uh, learned 
that Bojong in Atlanta was Fundi's personal friend and that's why he picked him. Fundi did not pick the best person, the best Ambazonian in the United States, the most popular Ambazonian in the United States, the most credible Ambazonian in the state, the most patriotic Ambazonian in the He picked his friend, James Bojong in Atlanta. And James Bojong went around and exploited our enthusiasm to help our country to become democratic. I'll tell you another one. Even Ayok Tabe, even Ayok Tabe sat in Nigeria, appointed Sako and appointed Chris Anu and some other people around the world to represent him. Seseko did not know these people. He did not know who Sako is. He just saw him on online doing his Dr. Common Sense. Heard Chris Anu, who has been on, online forever, trying to run Cameroon Journal, Southern Cameroon Journal, change the names. The man was trying, he was, he was struggling in, in America. He was struggling in America. These two, Sako and, and Chris Anu, were struggling in America. And so they have the time to be online all the time. So Sisiko saw that and like, oh, I'm going to make them my, my ministers or my secretaries or whatever. These are the people who in the past four years have wrecked the American diaspora from supporting the struggle of Ambazonians in Amazonia. I don't want to dwell on these people, but I just wanted to point out to you that Sako and Chris Anu and uh, Irene Ngwa, these people were not appointed by the Ambazonian people in America. They were not appointed by the Ambazonian Americans. They were not appointed by uh, uh, um, anybody living in America who knew. And look, when I say this, it's almost like I'm blaming Seseko for doing what he did. It was easy for him. I'm not saying he doesn't have blame. But it was easy for him to do that because there was no organization in America for him to call and say, hey, uh, um, America organization, this is, this is what I want to accomplish. Can you, that organization, help me? Because you already have the organization, you already know the members, you have been talking to them, all of you have been working as a team. If that organization was existing, that's what Siseko would have tapped into. He would have just called and said, I'm coming to America. And then that organization would say, okay, you have done your homework. Uh, we cannot do what you're doing down there because we're outside the territory. But you have done a great job. Come here. We'll help you accomplish more. That's how we form partnerships for our victory. Instead, we allow this little group that has organized itself in, in, in Nigeria to do everything because the rest of us are disorganized. If the American diaspora organizes itself, there will be no opportunity for, for Ambazonians to organize a rally at the, at the UN. I don't know if some of you remember that rally at the UN maybe four or five years ago, where Chu Ayaba went there and was talking about rooftop to rooftop and block by block. When you go to the UN, the, even if the UN Secretary General is not there listening, they have their scouts in the crowd. They come to listen to what your complaint is and they will write it down and take it to the highest office that that complaint can go to at the UN. But when you go there and you talk about block by block and rooftop by rooftop, you don't need to go to the UN to talk about roof, uh, block by block and rooftop to rooftop. That is in Ambazonia. Go and be rooftopping and rooftopping in Ambazonia and, 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 um, <laughs> and block by block down there. Okay? You don't need to go and say it in New York. You see how this organization has really destroyed our struggle? And, and he's saying, as he is saying this, the rest of the world is listening. And they are thinking, why is their leadership at the UN, instead of telling the UN that this is where you went wrong, this is what we want you to do for us, what is your ask to the UN? Your ask to the UN cannot be telling the UN that you go and be going from rooftop to rooftop and block by block.
It doesn't make sense. And so people who were thinking, oh, they have a good argument, then when they start listening to your solutions, then they're like, they back off. Because they cannot support lunatics. You will get in trouble supporting them. Because it's not gonna because what they talk about is not gonna give you what you think should be their results. We want to stop all of that. We want to stop all of that. No, 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 the creation of the SDF was to address that extendability of the people of the Southern Cameroon. Mm -hmm. I think after 1961, the people of the Southern Cameroon were put into this uh, French sphere of influence, which basically negated uh, what was supposed to be the uh, ascension to independence. Mm -hmm. And I think the primary driver behind the creation of the SDF was to reverse that uh, that. Uh, that process. Today, the SDF is a pan Cameroonese organization. In fact, they have been fighting the Ambazonian. I, I know they used to call SCNC one time that it was a joke. The SCNC as a joke. The SCNC was an organization for the liberation of Ambazonia. The SDF was laughing at them and, and was having a, a pan Cameroon agenda. Guess who financed that pan Cameroon agenda? The Ambazonians in America. Were they, were they trying to finance a pan Cameroon agenda? No. They were just thinking about what is happening to their people and they are looking for solutions and somebody comes up with a solution that was a pan Cameroonist agenda, which means tightening the news, around the necks of the, the Ambazonia. And that's what we finance when we finance the SDF. Uh, a few years back, maybe a year or two, uh, the guy who, who took over from Frundi Oshi, he came and had a meeting in town here and was laughing at the Amber Boys. Into the wind the children run Carrying your heads up high Wonder in your eyes, bright dreams of tomorrow, beautiful children of tomorrow's generation. In your eyes, all is right, on your shoulders, not a care. Thinking that it's great to be alive in this world of one now. Was telling us how much he hates the Amber Boys. Of tomorrow's generation. And I was just looking and like, this guy has the balls to come and sit even amongst us. And was telling us that he hates the hope. The hope of the Ambazonian people. The hope that that only struggling man can make it to the top. That your bright dreams of tomorrow are just an illusion. With with we've been having top down. Um, control from 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 Africa so what do we do so some very patriotic Ambazonians came together and they decided that we have to organize America so that Ambazonians can benefit from that organization I know that organization very well. I am a strong supporter of that organization. I'm a strong member of that organization. I am 
part of the founding of that organization and I think that we all should start looking for that organization so that we all come together form that solid core from which we can save our people from which we can talk to the American people those of you who heard Thibaut Nash um, in his last interview with the gentleman back in Douala it was a beautiful in, uh, uh, interview one of the best interviews that I've heard given to Thibaut Nash as far as our issues are concerned Thibaut Nash said the the uh, the struggle of the people of Ambazonia is absolutely a just struggle but that Ambazonians need to organize themselves in order to accomplish I want to introduce to you this organization called American Ambazonian Common Interest Committee AACIC it is that organization that has that has formed to bring all Ambazonians in America together so that we start working together and start deciding where we spend our time and our money it's for us in America to come together bring all our monies together bring all our ideas together bring all our 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 bodies together so that when we have uh, a protest it is an effective protest we know what our message is we know who we're talking to because we know America once America makes that decision, the rest of the West follow. So the American diaspora is where we all need to, to, to organize ourselves and help our people down in the territory. We need to support them. We need to support them by changing international policy so that, so that um, any of the policies that we're seeing, La Republic, uh, seeing Cameroon as... As a, as a real country starts seeing it for what it is, a colony that is being ruled by bandits. And these bandits are being sent all over the place to come and exploit the Ambazonian people. When the American diaspora comes together, you will realize that some leadership will start coming into play and you will see that we will, we will, start, we will start helping our different communities. There's, a, there's an economic principle that the multiplier cuts in both ways. Our multiplier has been cutting in the negative. Because the American diaspora is not organized, um, the leadership is wrong, the money contributor go to the wrong place, the people fighting on the ground have no support, the, the refugees in, in scattered all over the place have no support, and so we start cutting negative into negative into negative. Now the enemy can come, burn our villages we have no response to it no we need to change that so ladies and gentlemen go to this website check it out look at what uh, look at what uh, that website is telling you and join and join because it is very very important and it is very central to our success because like Thibaut Nais said, once the, once the people's will has determined, no military can break it down.